help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, typically when we talk about the effect that we are having on the rest of the ummah, there is this sense of introspection that's lacking. What role am I playing at the spiritual level when it comes to everyone else? And so you can talk about the role of sins in bringing about burden, or you could talk about the role of dua and bringing about relief. But subhanAllah, there's a very specific act of worship that distinguishes us from everyone else. And many people would think that this act of worship is for this small group of people. It's for the awliya, it's for this small group of friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that not many people can do. And some would even say that it's unwise to even talk about this act of worship when people are struggling with the bare minimum. So someone might say, why would you talk about Qiyamul Layl? Why would you talk about the night prayer when most Muslims are struggling to even pray five times a day? And I'm going to tell you exactly why and why it's so important in this moment. If a person is not praying five times a day, then it could be that they are a source of sin upon this ummah. But if a person wants to be a source of strength for this ummah, then that's where Qiyam comes in. That's number one. Number two, it could be that in that night prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provokes in you a sweetness in your talking to Him, in your relationship with Him, in those moments of being alone that actually transforms the quality of your five salawat. If you learn to enjoy your Qiyam, if you learn to enjoy two rak'ahs at night, that can actually transform all five of your prayers during the day because you actually would have had some meaning in it and you're not thinking about everything that has to come and everything that you have to do. Allah tells the Prophet that verily the night and in the night it is a time where you can develop greater strength and you're less distracted because there's so much that you have to do during the day. And so the quality that you gain from two rak'ahs at night can transform five prayers of the day. But there's something else that I really want us to get to. And I say this, by the way, subhanAllah, that this is something that we should all aspire to, starting with myself. This is a deed that we should struggle with, and this is a deed that I am struggling with, and this is a deed that I hope all of us will struggle with, bi ta'ala. That in this moment in particular, there is nothing that can build us for the moment like Qiyam as individuals and as societies. There is nothing that can give us victory over those who oppress us like this particular act of worship. And I want to take you back to the moment that the Prophet ﷺ comes to Medina and he gives his inauguration speech. And you've all heard this many times, but I want you to pay attention to the only thing that differentiates this speech, or the main thing that differentiates this speech from anything that anyone had ever heard before. Ayyuhan nas, he gathers all the people, the Muslims, the Jews of Medina, the polytheists of Medina, the people that, maybe the few Christians in Medina, people of all different backgrounds and faiths, right? They're coming around to hear what this man is going to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina when he finally has a platform. He can finally speak because in Mecca, they didn't allow him to speak in public Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They persecuted him Alayhi Salatu Wasallam in his own home. Ayyuhan nas, O people, Afshu Salam, spread peace. Now, if, if you're not Muslim, you can appreciate spread peace. Afshu Salam, and of course we have the specific greeting Assalamu Alaikum, but it's more than that. Because so many Muslims say Assalamu Alaikum, but they intend everything else with, with, except for Salam when they give it to you. They say Assalamu Alaikum, peace be unto you, but everything under the words of Salam is not Salam. Right? So Assalamu Alaikum is an intention towards your brother as well. Assalamu Alaikum, peace be unto you, an intention from sister to sister as well. Assalamu Alaikum, peace be unto you. Afshu Salam, spread peace, not just with your words, but with everything else. 
all right, if I'm, if I'm someone who's hearing the Prophet for the first time, I've heard something like that before. أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ Feed the poor. Beautiful. Salam is what Jesus, peace be upon him, used to say in the Bible, right? Even now, peace be unto you. This is the greeting of the Prophets. Assalamu alaikum. Feed the poor. We can find this noble trait in multiple ways of life. Of course, we want to excel with it and we have a different push towards it. But feed the people and especially the poor. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Wasilul Arham. And connect your families, establish the ties of kinship. This is a beautiful trait, a beautiful quality that has a universal manifestation. But then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Pray at night while other people are sleeping. Stand up and pray at night when everybody else goes to sleep. Tadkhulul Jannah bi Salam. You'll enter paradise in peace. This is different. SubhanAllah, in the narration of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, qala alayhi salatu wa salam, u'budu rahman worship ar-Rahman. Who is ar-Rahman? Never heard of ar-Rahman before, the most merciful. Worship ar-Rahman. And afshu salam wa at'imu ta'am, and so on and so forth. Spread peace and feed the people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that the way this society is going to be established and distinguish itself, the secret ingredient beyond what we already know, of the good things that Allah has put in us to naturally incline towards. The secret ingredient is going to be that those same people that are spreading peace, those same people that are feeding the poor, those same people that are working, are not making an excuse for themselves to not fight with their bodies and stand up to replenish their souls at night. This is what's gonna be your secret ingredient to building this society, O Ansar, in a way that no one has ever, ever built a society before. This is where it's going to come down to the characters that build the culture of Medina. A very specific group of people. Stand up and pray at night when other people go to sleep. SubhanAllah, there's a connection here. The first address in Medina that the Prophet ﷺ gives to the people is stand up and pray at night. And the first address that Allah gives to the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca in his most devastating times when he's alone in society is Ya ayyuhal muzammil qum al-layla illa qalila of the first words. O oh, you who is wrapped up, stand up at night and pray except for a little bit. Push yourself, O oh Muhammad ﷺ. Because in Medina you need to build a society but in Mecca, you need to build a character. You need to build a certain type of spiritual resilience that's going to allow you to deal with oppression. In Mecca, you have to resist the society that wants you to be something you're not. In Medina, you have to build a society that no one has ever seen before. And the secret ingredient of both of those is gonna be your willingness to stand up and pray at night. Because you're going to nurture something in those moments that no one else can nurture. You're going to kindle a fire in your heart in those moments that no one else knows what it's like to kindle. But you have to be willing to put in that sacrifice. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the five prayers obligatory, He made Qiyamul Layl obligatory on the Prophet He made the night prayer obligatory on the Prophet and the believers by extension. Then once Allah revealed the five obligatory prayers, then the second part of Al-Muzammal was revealed as Aisha radiallahu anha said, which turned it into a voluntary prayer. My beloved brothers and sisters, the Hajjud distinguishes you from other people. In the night, you can do Qiyam, pray the Hajjud, and you can strengthen your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spread peace, give food to people, and pray at night when people are asleep at night and enter Jannah with peace. Wake up for tahajjud. It shows that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you love Allah, it will become easy for you to wake up in the middle of the night, in the last third of the night and wake up and pray Qiyamul Layl, pray tahajjud, recite Quran. So, wake up during the last third of the night and build your connection with your Rabb, with your Lord, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer. Tahajjud and Qiyamul Layl turns an ordinary person into a special person. 
it has a sweetness which you will not get anywhere else when you pray tahajjud you will understand that the sweetness of tahajjud you will not find it in any other materialistic things in this world so get up and try praying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua in tahajjud so if you need something if you are in desperation if you want to become successful if you want to get the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want your dua to be accepted then wake up in the last third of the night and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's listening to you he's saying ud'uni astajib lakum call me i'll respond to your call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give you allah wants to forgive you but are you willing to ask his forgiveness are we willing to gain his pleasure are we willing to wake up for tahajjud and ask him for whatever we need if you want to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala besides praying your five daily salah and reciting quran and doing other obligations you also need to wake up for tahajjud as much as you can once you try allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description